call to order the Spring Grove Board of Education meeting for Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. Um, things are a little different tonight since our organizational meeting, so we'll start with 1.1. Uh, in accordance um, with board policy, the 2019 board president, Jamie Belanger, will open the meeting and serve as president pro tem until a new president is elected. And then we'll move on to, we have to vote on that? So we'll move on to 1.2, the swearing in of re-elected board members. Okay. Wow. 
making your way out. Yeah, I gotta get her home to bed. Look at the time. See you guys. Jamie Melange as president of the Springboro Community City School District Board of Education for calendar year 2020. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. Are you going to do a good job? <laughs> Plan to. <laughs> you're, you're elected. Uh, Stacy. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Abstain. Good. Yes. <laughs> I know I can. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we are now going to open nominations for board vice president. Are there any nominations? I'll nominate Dan here. Mr. Goods. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Nominations for board vice president are now closed. Um, so now we have approval to elect Dan Goods as Vice President of the Springboro Community City School District Board of Education for calendar year 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. Discussion. You're not going to ask him the same question. He knows. He knows. <laughs> to item 2.3, uh, the adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? Yes. Anderson? Yes. 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 Okay. Item 2.4, approval of the December 5th, 2019 meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Stevie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Chad? Yes. 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 Item 2.5 is the approval of the December 16th, 2019 special meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? Stevie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Chad? Yes. 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 And item 2.6 uh, will establish the meeting dates, times, and places for the 2020 calendar year. And there's a the calendar is attached to the meeting agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion. Do we establish the 2021 or is that? Yeah, that's a, that's it's, the next step. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's later. <laughs> We're moving these to Wednesdays uh, so that there's no conflict with board the career, the career centers. centers. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. Stinky? Uh, yes. Anderson? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, so item 3.1 uh, is the appointment of board members to district committees facilitated by the superintendent and treasurer. Do I have to read through all of these? Or? We should say they're posted. Okay, yeah, no, it's posted on the website and they're also in the, uh, the agenda. Uh, 
Um, you need to uh, approve these. So is there a motion to approve the committee representatives as uh, presented in the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? Well, the calendars and, uh, scheduled. have all these meetings been scheduled. So, yeah, um, yeah not yet. Yeah. I looked at very briefly. So they will be posted on the. Uh, uh, standing resolutions item 4.1 the approval to authorize the treasurer to request the advance of property tax revenue from the Warren and Montgomery County auditors for all amounts available is there a motion to approve oh sorry I didn't realize we were doing the other that's right so item 4.2 is the approval of membership renewal with the Spring Road Chamber of Commerce item 4.3 the approval of membership to the Ohio School Board Association Item 4.4 is the approval to establish a board service fund for 2020 according to the ORC section 3315.15 in the amount of $20,000 and to authorize reimbursement of full expenses to Board of Education members for authorized activities upon presentation of proper receipts. Uh, item 4.5 is the approval to authorize the superintendent and treasurer to attend seminars and meetings that are beneficial to them as representatives of the school district during 2020 within the limits of board appropriated funds. And then item 4.6 seeks the approval of items 4.1 through 4.5. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Discussion or questions? I just want to make a statement about um, 4.4 with the reimbursement of board members. I have to compliment our treasurer department on how thorough you guys are with, like when we just went to OSBA and what is required of us board members is so thorough to make sure we have the receipts and everything to back up any expenses from that training. So I appreciate how thorough you require everybody, no matter what your role is in the district, to um, have accountability. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Staff? Yes. 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 Right. Item 5.1 is the approval to establish January 6, 2021 as the organizational meeting for 2021. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Everybody free that day. <laughs> <coughs> Stevie? Yes. Anderson? Staff? Yes. 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 Okay. We'll move into public participation and in the introduction of guests. Uh, 6.1, the Spring Borough Education Association report. I don't believe we have. Thank okay. you. Uh, item 6.2, the Spring Borough Classified Employees Association report. I don't believe we have anybody here. No, neither. <coughs> uh, item 6.3, I do not believe there was any prearranged public participation. Um, item 6.4, any other public participation? wondering why there's a two-year contract for an interim superintendent. Is there a superintendent search? 
Um, we will have some discussion on that as we get later into the uh, okay. to the agenda. Then right. we can talk, and I think that question will right. come through in the, the comments associated with that vote. Okay, I've got another one in another section. We can approach, I guess. We Is it part of the work session items? It's about sub bus driver. We've had resignations and retirements from our routed bus drivers that um, we won't, we're, we need subs to fill in until next year when those routes are rebid and um, and we can hire and train. And when a driver calls off sick, we, we don't have anybody to pull from in order to drive the routes. So because our pay is lower and we've done the, the analytics of the districts nearby, we, we are considerably lower in our sub pay. Okay. Is your question why is it lower than the regular? Why is it higher than the regular? For, if I if I read this right, the regular oh, is 50 and the sub is 60. Yes. The former, yeah, the former, the, the current substitute rate is 1550. Yeah. We're asking to move it to 1650. 1650. Bus driver starting salaries yeah, are 1692. So it's they're still less than the, than the regular bus driver's rate. Okay, well the email's going out say starting at 1550. Because we haven't, we haven't it hasn't been board approved to okay. raise it to 1650. Okay. But then for the regular pay, that isn't anything that we can automatically change without bringing union negotiations into um, play, which is on the horizon, but we have a real need right now. Does that answer your? Okay. Um, so now we'll move into the work session. And we can start with item 7.2, the Springboro Intermediate Paving Project. Hello, everybody. Good Hello. evening. So I, I don't know if you have this. I think that it was scanned in. So there's a company, uh, Prodigy Building Solutions. They are a, uh, uh, a company that will go out and, uh, you know, basically do from, you know, nuts to bolts uh, a project that you have. Uh, I've met with them a few times, and uh, uh, they've done a considerable amount of work just to identify all of our paving issues that we have in all of our buildings. Right now, SI is in desperate need of redoing, and you're going to have to actually take off two to three inches of the pavement and then repave it all. Around $190,000 now, and our budget for next year we have $100,000. So, do we do it all? Do we kind of piecemeal it? I'm not really sure. We haven't gotten to that point yet. This company would come in, and um, uh, they have materials contracts with different uh, vendors. Um, they do engineering, so they will take soil samples to make sure that if, when it's paved, that the thickness thickness is correct. Um, it's not going to sink. It's stuff that we're going to have to to do anyways to make sure that everything is, is done correctly. Um, so this is basically just going into a, an agreement with them saying, look, you can do the due diligence uh, upwards to uh, $7,500 that we will be obligated to pay on actual costs um, to do the R&D work, you know, to, to look at the engineering. Um, and then if we decide to move forward with it, um, you know, we can obviously move forward with them. If not, we can go a different route. So we can do an RFP but we don't have that material buying power that a company like this would have. So we're gonna, we're gonna save money by going with the company that has that buying power. Are there any other companies that might offer this service? There are, there's a lot of them out there, yes. So have we already looked at those price-wise also to know that this would be the was bang for your buck, basically. Yeah, so I, I met with uh, two other companies. I can get that information to you. Okay. Um, but they were right around the same cost as far as just to come out and do an estimate. These people have really shown a very big interest. They're community members. They're part of Springboro. Um, the kids go here, so um, you know they're definitely hometown people, and they really want the the help. So they're essentially acting as a just an intermediary, is that right? The what to bid things out. So I mean if 
we're hoping it's it's something south of 190. Absolutely. It, okay. Yep. Yep. And then um, trying to make best eye is that all the way back to the state like everything. <coughs> everything. And, you know, we need to really look at that area too. We talked about. Oh, that's my fault. That's a, a poster that I put up for board appreciation. <laughs> but we'd actually look at doing some reworking of, um, of the way the kids get dropped off. So that's part of that plan okay. too. Um, it's just we need to start chipping away at it. It's a seven-year expected project for all of our schools. Some are in a lot better shape, but some are just you know we can probably do a little bit of work. But I don't want to invest a lot of money into something where we're just going to tear it out two years from now. So we're trying to make sure that we you know do the right things at the right time. And this company would help with that. So what does the 7,500 so do? Yeah, they'll come in and do a soil t uh, test, they'll drill in, they'll do a um, uh, thickness test, uh, engineering, you know, all of the design and all of that stuff. So they've actually spent a considerable amount of time in our um, uh, chart room with all of our blueprints and stuff to make sure that, you know, all the stuff has been properly does it benefit them at all as they're, because the bidding would be, they would do the bidding. Yeah. Is there a benefit that's motivating them to, I don't know, that, so I'm sure they would probably do what's best for Spring Road, but is there something that is motivating them to make sure that we're not just bidding out to friends, but we're yeah. getting the best for um, financially? Sure, absolutely, and I'll be part of that bidding process too. Oh, so, you will be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They're, they're, I'm just, they're more or less, the buying power that we don't have because we're not a construction gotcha. company they're going to go out and, okay. and get those uh, lower prices <laughs> even you know they're part of the you know there's the cooperative purchasing program that the state says okay you can't go over this this is even actually going to be lower than what we would get if i was to go out and do it already. i just need a little bit more to understand oh, no, that that, that's okay yeah. and that was a good question yeah there are other companies there's quite a few companies that i, I talked to period um, they've shown a great interest um, in, in It's always great to support local yeah. if you feel that they're doing the same, or somebody from Spring Grove, if you feel that they're doing the same quality work yeah. at the same price. And also, um, next month, they would like to come out and do a presentation, just a short 10 minute presentation on SI, tell you kind of what they do and how they go about doing the engineering and everything. So you'll be able to see that. All right, any questions? All right, thank you. Seven point three committee reports. Are there no committee reports since we last met? Okay. <laughs> Item seven point four: discussion of other business as required. Okay, we'll move into the treasurer section. All right. Um, Item eight point one will be the approval of the tax budget. Item 8.2 will be December financials. Um, December was the <coughs> high month, but it was a little expensive. Um, we're halfway through, as of December 31st, we're halfway through the fiscal year. Um, December and June are, are expensive months for debt payments. Um, typically, you know, usually due around the first of the month, sometime between the first and the third. So we'll typically pay at the end of November for December's and then at the end of May for June's. Um, the debt payments for general fund for December debt payments were 174000 so that wasn't terrible, but um, our bond retirement debt payments were $5.4 million, so we um, had some extensive uh, wires for those debt payments in the um, end of November and December. Um, I know the board had liked to get an update on the school lunch donation program, so as of now, uh, after there's a couple items to approve here tonight, um, but with those amounts, there'll be $535 in the um, student lunch donation account. And as of the 6th, so yesterday, um, there was only $203 in current outstanding lunch charges. So that's good. She does really good with the efforts to, to um, remind and to... So at what point does she dip into the... Well, we had talked about that. I think we're going to be visiting that here. Um, this week we're having a meeting. Next week, and next week we're going to have a meeting. Um, we had talked earlier about maybe doing it once a year, twice a year. Um, it's just, sometimes it's just efforts of having to remind 
scans of your toes that might not necessarily be a, a, a problem. Like, so if you jump too quick in those, then it might just be a timing issue. So we're going to talk through um, how often we want to do those it's quarterly, twice a year, once a year. And we'll talk about that in the update um, once we do that. Um, as of the close of December, we currently have 61 days of operating cash on hand. Um, that will grow um, once tax advances start coming in, which is good. This last month, we had about 83 days of operating cash on hand. So obviously, when you have no revenue coming in and big expenditures, it dips into that cash balance pretty quickly. Um, but the tax advances should start coming in at the beginning of February. So <coughs> we'll, we'll see that number grow. Um, I will have a CCP update um, for you this month. Um, we should, uh, the 10th is when the um, next payments come in from the state. And with that, we'll, be able to, we'll show what our CCP costs were for summer and fall semester. And that will be a, encompassing a full year because we already know what our costs were for spring. So I'll be able to update the board on that. And then as of the close of December, we had $9.4 million um, in cash in our general fund. And, and then the rest of the financials are obviously on there if you guys have any questions. Um, item 8.3 is approval of the donation for $80, which was included in that amount I gave you earlier. School lunch balances. Um, I believe fifty. Um, David and Deborah DeMunch, fifty dollars, and Ron and Sherry Malone, thirty dollars, and then also approval of a donation of twelve benches valued at three thousand three hundred seventy-seven dollars and sixty-four cents from the high school tennis courts from an anonymous donor. And then a late ad um, was actually something that had already been done, but I was notified it hadn't been brought to you guys for approval. That is approval of a donation of an automated flag with labor and materials valued at five thousand dollars for the high school from Saturn Electric. So that's okay, thank you. So item eight point six seeks the approval of items eight point one through eight point five. Is there a motion to approve? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then 
four. The four is the approval of the personnel report for athletics. Okay, so our motion to approve item 9.4. So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? <coughs> Abstain. Yes. 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 Okay. So, so, and I, I'm going to do nope. um, okay. Emily's portion. She thought the meeting was tomorrow, so it was a calendar mix up. But this is just to seek the approval of a contract for private um, transportation for a student. Okay. Is there a motion to approve item 10.1? So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Bad? Yes. 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 Okay. Now to your business manager. Hello again. Good evening, board members and board president. So I would like to get your approval for going into a contract with Bison Group. They are our um, elevator repair company. And um, as Mr. Stuckey knows, we have some, um, uh, some need there. Yeah. So over the last two years, um, we have spent $30,000 in repairs to the current um, elevator, or, uh, yeah, elevators we have. So if you, if we switch to this contract, which our elevators are getting older, obviously, um, if we go into this new contract, we are roughly going to say, based on the two years prior history that we have, around $2,300 per year. Now. That is going to increase as these age, and we need to do more maintenance to it. Um, these costs are incurred when <coughs> break down, when somebody comes out to service them. Right now, we just have a basic service contract. But if they come out when um, Mr. Stuckey got stuck, sorry, you're going to be picked on here. Yeah. Um, they had to come out, and we spent a considerable amount of money just to make sure that it was cleared and operational. So I cost us. Oh well, no, it was it was needed. Um, so if we go into this, then they are on call for us from a time frame of 6 o'clock, which is good for us. It's typically from 8 to 4.30, but we roll that back from 6 to about 2 o'clock because that's when we are in session. So they'll come out, service um, at no cost to us. So we're basically going to have a flat rate um, and then anything that goes into the maintenance and uh, servicing of the equipment will be um, charged to them. Uh, unless somebody goes in and tears the wall, you know, paint a wall or something like that. I mean, that's something that we want to pay for. But uh, basic um, maintenance and service is going to be on that one. And the reason that I like this is because we are only going to continue to spend money on the pieces of equipment, um, and we want them to be safe. Looked at other companies. There are other companies out there. This is kind of the company that you want to go with, from my understanding, talking with other businesses. There are other companies, maybe even cheaper companies, but I want somebody who's going to be joining the spot. Is the edge care building that's our responsibility for it is. Yes. Yep. So we have, do we have a chairlift for a student at Clear Creek? Uh, we have a chair. I don't know if a student utilizes it, but we do have a, a chairlift out there. So is that why it's a bronze? Because it's not a two-level building? Yep. Yeah, we're doing it. That's yeah. Go, go. Item 11.2 is next for the self-bus pay. Oh, self-bus pay. Oh, self-bus pay. Okay, self-bus pay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously we're having a, a, a great need for self-bus-wise. Uh, self is pretty much all around, but we're talking about bus drivers. So 1550 is what we have right now. Uh, proposal is to add another dollar to that to 1650. Uh, we are at 1697.92. 1692 uh, right now for our uh, step zero bus drivers coming in. Eventually, we're going to have to look at that. Next month, uh, Michelle Palmer and I will give a presentation to you concerning all of our transportation needs. Uh, this is hopefully something that will help us get some people in. I believe that we got three calls by running some ads and some papers. We did secure one person that will come in and sub. So at least we're, we're trying there. Are they already trained to where we can use them immediately? Or yes, yeah, so they have their CDL, and oh. you know, Miss Beth, that that's something that we'll have to investigate. And we'll propose that 
next month, do we do some situation where we pay for their CDL, but they have to stay with us a certain amount of time for the payback. We've got to really be creative. Other schools are just pumping money at people, um, and, and they're still having problems. So how can we be creative to retain those people? Is there a benefit for people if they already have their CDL? Like, do we give that as an incentive? That way we don't have to go through the training if you know, they come on full time? Yeah, we always have the ability to do some steps for them. Um, unfortunately, since I've been here, I don't think that we've had anybody that's coming with the CDL. This will be the first oh, one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I have one more question. Sorry. Yeah. Do the subs have to have the same level of training as our regular bus drivers? Uh, the, so they all have their CDL, but then they'll come and get training. So there's two, two different types of training. Yep. But yep. The subs so just have to. Okay. Yep. So even if you uh, get a sub from Lebanon or a bus driver from Lebanon, we still have uh, a ride along and safety checks that they need to do with us. Okay. Thank you. So item 11.3 is the approval of items 11.1, 11.2. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Yes. Anderson? Yes. Shad? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll move to uh, the board member reports. Item 12.1 uh, requests the approval of the amended contract for Carrie Hester as interim superintendent, effective <coughs> August 16, 2019 through July 31, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. Okay. Um, Discussion. You know, I'll start. Um, you know, hopefully, as uh, you know, everyone can appreciate, uh, there's a number of important matters that are currently facing the district. Um, so it's my belief uh, that we are best positioned to address these matters by uh, maintaining some level of stability at the superintendent position uh, at this time, as opposed to entering into a full-blown search. Um, Ms. Hester's contract uh, as an interim originally took her through the end of this school year and we're seeking to extend that to the end of the next school year and I believe that uh, Ms. Hester's done an excellent job stepping into what is a very challenging situation and, uh, and again it's my belief that uh, having her continue uh, for the time being while we're facing some of these matters is the best course of action at which time we can then assess our needs at that point and, and determine where we go forward so um, I've been appreciative, appreciative your efforts to this point and, uh, and hope that the, the board will uh, will approve this that, uh, that we're able to continue um, in tackling some of the very uh, uh, challenging things that uh, that we have on our plate at the time yeah I'm supportive as well um, I think Ms. Hester has done a wonderful job for us she certainly um, helped us when we were really in a pinch um, you know I, I agree I think um, the timing of um, everything that's transpired this um, really, you know, gave us pause in terms of when uh, when we thought it was the right time to do a, a full search. So I think this gives us some breathing room, which is much needed, especially with everything that's going on in the district. So, um, you know, we appreciate that you're willing to um, stick with us with, with this um, and carry on, and um, you know, we'll, we'll readdress this in a year. I think that's the appropriate thing to do for this district. job and it, and it gives, gives her a runway to even, not only, we just don't want to get by, and we, we, want to, we want to grow and improve, and that's what's important, we just, we just don't want to muddle, we've had to muddle here for a while, but we, we, we've got enough runway now to get, get back where we should be. off of that I think as we're looking at where moving forward bringing a new superintendent in and we had just finished the strategic goals and we kind of had paused on that and and just working with Carrie in the last 
five or six months in a different position. I just have seen her very um, data driven and very goal focused, but being an intern for such a short period of time, it's hard to really grab those and move a district forward. And if we brought somebody else on at this time, it could be difficult having them acclimate to Springboro and what that's gonna look like and where, what even got us to the point of those strategic goals. Um, and the other piece of it is just, um, while I think that's all super, super important, I also have seen her interaction with the community and with parents when, because I've heard from parents that have met with her about concerns after they met with her, and it's just been so positive because you're open, you are listening, and though you might not be able to always do exactly what they want, but they feel listened to, and we need to communicate that to the community that we're here to represent them, and you're here because it's Springboro Community School District. So I appreciate that, and I'm excited that you're going to have some extra time to really make it yours, rather than coming in during a time of crisis for us. Any other comments, questions? Let's see if uh, she has any questions. Does that answer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so item 12.2 is the approval of a three-year contract for Carrie Hester as Executive Director of Human Resources, effective August 1st, 2021. Um, so this is obviously because we have tacked on another year to the interim superintendent. We are pushing the, the three-year contract for your old role uh, out another year to begin when that interim um, superintendent role expires. So is there a motion to approve item 12.2? So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? Yes. Anderson? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so we'll go now to board member comments, announcements. First off, I want to say to um, those of you working on the transportation issues and trying to figure out how we can solve the issues at hand. I appreciate the communication that came out from the district to say some things might look different on the services, but we're doing everything possible to try to resolve the issue. So um, hopefully this is gonna help us bring some success towards that. Um, and thanks to the STEM, the students that came and presented and shared with us their STEM project. I just, it excites me to think about what our students are now doing compared to you know, years and years ago, what a typical science class looked like. It's just exciting to see. And like the, the girl that was helping me, only one of our lights worked. And to see her problem solving, and just asking her questions and the way that she thought through it, it just, that's what we need as we are preparing people for the workforce. So that was super cool. Um, super excited to serve with Charles on another board. <laughs> Um, I just have been so impressed with the career center. <laughs> he told me this button, he's going to quiet me every time he likes the button that he's bringing in Thursday. <laughs> That's why he's been hitting this. <laughs> um, but I just am so impressed with the career center and what they're doing for the students that that fits that model. So um, I'm excited to serve alongside that and to learn more about what they're doing for our students that are um, choosing that as either all or part of their um, education. And the last thing is just welcome Carrie. We're excited to have you here and to see what we're gonna do moving forward. Thanks.
Well, the young man did all mine, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that was, that's a, that's a great program. We appreciate the teachers, principal, assistant principal <coughs> being here and uh, showing us that. So, and welcome. Congratulations, Carrie. We have, we have, we have two people down there at the end of the table that, in my opinion, I've been on a lot of boards. Um, you know, they do, a, they do a fine job because a lot of it's not only just a, it's not just a job. It's from here, and um, and that's for Tara as well as Carrie and uh, the time that she talks about working from home. And, and I don't think anybody really appreciates how how much these two put in time outside of this office here, so, so I know we all appreciate that. Uh, I also want to congratulate you and say good luck <coughs> because uh, your plate's going to be full coming up here, but I appreciate you taking this off. And then the uh, fifth graders that uh, made me look silly up here, but uh, you know, it's amazing what they can do nowadays and appreciate that. And, um, hopefully you'll get some bus drivers. You know, you got a nice sign down there at 73 and 741, right? You know, right there. So um, enough people can see it there. So hopefully something good will come out of that. Okay. Um, so I guess first of all, um, you know, again, thanks to Ms. Beth and uh, Mr. Anderson, that is a lot of work. So. Glad you guys are going to be involved, and I think it's um, a big amendment, but you know, it's much appreciated. Congratulations, Carrie. I think I really enjoyed working with you and uh, Miss Floyd. So, um, you know, here's to another year. Um, I hope you like working with us because <laughs> it's going to be a long, twelve months. Um, but now we're, we're we're thrilled that you know you continue to step up, and I, I think great things are going to happen. Um, you know, I think um, you know I was really pleased. I know it's kind of a relative scheme of things a small thing but just increasing that um, sub bus rate is hopefully a step in the right direction you know and I, I hope everybody can appreciate that we are truly trying to do everything possible to address these issues as they come up and um, unfortunately we don't have a lot of maneuverability but um, you know I think again it's 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 making us more competitive um, in that sub bus market and um, you know we'll, we'll keep tackling these issues as, as best we can. Um, so, you know, I'm glad we were able to do that. Um, and then finally, thank you to all the donations. Like I said earlier, I, the flag that we got, um, you know, the big five, I, you definitely felt the $5,000 flag, whatever it was one. Um, but, you know, all the way down to our um, two donations for the lunch uh, balance, that's, that's great. I mean, that makes a big, I bet the, the, the three or four or $5 um, lunch for a child you know, makes it just as big of a deal as, the, you know, the big flag coming down. So, uh, you know, thanks to everybody that continues to donate to us. I think the tennis courts have been, like, revamped yeah. 10 times over now. It's great. Um, so, anyway, thank you, everybody, and happy year. So, welcome to 2020. And I was, like, literally thinking, like, everything I was going to say has been covered up. So, well, I could say Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And, yeah, so there's, like, literally nothing. Uh, have to add just echoing I guess what everybody else said in terms of thanks for the donations thank you for the, the students that presented and thank you for your willingness to continue serving uh, for an additional year and, and thank you to Mrs. Floyd for all that you do uh, as well and, uh, and so yeah can I, I say something for I you I belabor the point yes go ahead I didn't thank Jamie and Dan for the role of president and vice president you guys did a lot of extra work last year as we worked through transition. So I meant to say that, and it wasn't written down, so I didn't say it. So I appreciate your time and willingness to serve again, because um, that, that is definite extra commitment. So thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to, to serve again. So, yeah, we thank you too. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and thank you again for your willingness to serve on the Career Center Board. So, any other announcements, future considerations? I just wanted, like Mr. Suki said, to say thank you to Chris Pizzuto and the city for allowing us to put that banner up there so we can solicit some more recognition of what our true need is. Um, like we all know, the, the money, it'll do a little bit, but it isn't going to solve the bigger problem. So um, they're very willing to help us out, and we appreciate that. And thank you.
you also for your full support for this position. Um, we've got an amazing team and we try to do right every day. And it's not the easiest thing, but to know that we have you all remaining stable and consistent, that's going to help too. So thank you. All right. Uh, so item 13.1. Adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Discussion. Can we hold it? No. Um, Dickie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Chad? Yes. 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 All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>